So we're now going to turn our attention to the central section. And obviously, the, the success of the western section is now leading us to turn our attention to what we sometimes call the missing link, um, the link between Bedford and Cambridge. So I'm going to ask Julian Hubbard uh, to give uh, his overview on, on how he sees um, the important work that, uh, that we're undertaking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. And it happens with so many of these schemes. I remember when I was a, a new, fresh-faced young councillor talking about the idea of having a new station in Cambridge and being derided because it was a ridiculous pie-in-the-sky idea that would never happen. And now it is being built, thanks to the County Council and a lot of extra work for Network Rail. So these things can happen. Can I also give my apologies, um, because I'm going to have to run off, because I'm actually supposed to be speaking at the moment in the chamber. Um, ra rather remarkably, in some ways, defending the government against Conservatives. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see how, how this trend goes. Um, uh, but, but there are certainly people who are, are very allergic to the word Europe, uh, as Ian, Ian will know some of his colleagues. Um, so, uh, sorry, I will have to run off in a, in a bit. But it is great to see this actually making progress, something I've certainly argued for for a long time. And around Cambridge, I'm, I'm very much not alone in thinking that it would make a whole lot of sense. Um, and the concept's very, very uh, clear. I think part of the challenge is getting people to realise that it's not just about the varsity link. It's not about Cambridge and Oxford only. And people do have this tendency to talk about it as though those are the only places that really count. Um, now, that is certainly part of it. I mean, people talk a lot about the Golden Triangle. Um, I don't really like that phrase. I prefer, uh, well, to some extent, prefer Boris Johnson's description, where he said that London is the U-bend of the Golden Triangle between Cambridge and Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, um, but certainly, it, that does relate to the fact that if you have a triangle where everything has to go through London, whether you think it's a U-bend or something more glamorous, um, the fact that we don't have the connection east-west really is a problem. Um, so it is much more, and actually, the Atkins report the commission, um, uh, the consortium commissioned, does show how many different connections there are, that it is all sorts of people trying to go from all sorts of places to all sorts of other places. So yes, it's Cambridge to Oxford and all the places in between, but it's also about Norwich and about Ipswich and how they get across uh, out of East Anglia and towards the West. Um, so the obvious financial benefits that, that result from that sort of connectivity. It's also about links to the other north-south lines, as Ian mentioned, you know, getting to the West Coast main line, all the other main lines that we'd like to be able to connect with without having to go through London. And that will help to massively relieve the pressure on London. The trains from Cambridge to London are solid, and we could take some of those people who don't want to go through London to go through other routes. So the case is, I think, really obvious for why it's worth doing. We do, of course, have to quantify it, as has been done so well for the Western section to win that case. And the other big challenge is, of course, finding a proper route and a detailed route. And I think it is definitely harder for this section, given the history of building along the railway lines and all sorts of other challenges that we now have. So we don't have that detailed route plan. We don't yet have the costs. Um, I'm really pleased that Network Rail have committed some money in order to do all of that. Um, I'm sure they will be able to do that for the money they have available, but if not, we'll have to make sure that there is enough cash to make sure that we have a detailed plan and a detailed business case in time probably for 2017 uh, for the next uh, period. And we've had lots of support. I mean, you probably saw Nick Clegg announced his specific support for East-West uh, Rail um, tied to, to Garden City growth, and that's really encouraging. So I'm re really excited we're making progress. We're going to get there. Ian says he wants to be re-elected in order to be there for the first train on the western section. I may have to be re-elected twice in order to see the first train from Cambridge. But if that's what it takes, I guess that's what I'll have to do. So thanks a lot. <laughs>